all right, how does this RC value appear physically as a time constant? We worked out that the product of resistance times capacitance is indeed a value of time. It has dimensions of time. And when you work out the units that ohms times farads, doing a unit analysis actually gives us seconds. So when I multiply resistance times capacitance, or ohms times farads, I get something that tells me something about the time behavior of this capacitor discharge circuit. Now, let's look at what this means by putting in one unit of time constant, meaning whatever my resistor and capacitor are in the circuit, let's just treat it as, I'm gonna call the value R times C, let me give it a special symbol, tau, Greek letter T. And so we can look at what V equals V at T. Well, we, let's start with T equals zero, which we know is V naught. V at T equals tau, which is the same as RC, is the same as V naught times E to the minus RC over RC. That cancels out. That's the same as saying V naught times E to the minus one, which is the same as saying V naught divided by E. What is divided by E? Well, it's, it's a fraction. And instead of saying V naught divided by two or half of V, or V naught divided by three, a third of V, we're V naught divided by 2.7 eight, one, eight, two, eight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what is that actually equal to? Well, I can punch this into one note right here. I can say one divided by 2.781828 equals, that's about 0.36 rounding this right here. So what I'm getting is that after one value of the time constant, this is T equals RC. This value that's left over is about 0 0.36 of my original value of V naught. So I'm getting just over a third of what I previously had. And then you can hopefully see this pattern. What am I going to get after V at T equals 2 tau? Or two times RC. This is the same as V naught times E to the minus two RC divided by RC, which is the same as V naught over E squared. So I'm just multiplying by another factor of one over E. And I already know what one over E is. So after two time constants, T equals not RC, sorry, 2RC. What I have here is 0.36 of what I had before. What is 0.36 times 0.36? Let's type it in, 0.36 times 0.36 equals, and I have 12% or 13%, 1.13 of V naught. But again, it's roughly a third of what was there before. And then I can consider this even further. I can say T equals three RC. I got a third of what was there before. And all of these, all of these decay curve sections are mirroring the previous one. They're just decaying to 36% of what was there before, or one over E fraction of what was there before. And that's, again, that time constant value. So what does this mean for an actual physical circuit? Let's say that circuit where we had a value of a resistor and a value of a capacitor, and we had thrown a switch to basically make this circuit, and then eventually the capacitor, whatever was positive on this side and negative on this side, is gonna reorient itself so that it's neutralized, we had a resistor R and a capacitor C. What this means 
is that if I have a resistor value of about, or exactly 100k kilo ohms, like on the circuit board in the experiment, and a capacitor value of 10 microfarads, well, the product of those, RC, the time constant for the circuit, is the same as 100 kilo ohms times 10 microfarads. I have to get rid of those, those metric prefixes. So what this becomes is 100,000 ohms and 10 times 10 to the minus 6, because that's what micro means, farads. I can rewrite this as 10 to the 5 ohms and 10 to the minus 5 farads. I already know that ohms times farads is going to give me seconds, and 10 to the 5 times 10 to the minus 5 is 10 to the 0, which is the same as 1 second. So if my resistor value is 100 kilo ohms and my capacitor is 10 microfarads, if it's going to discharge from whatever B naught, whatever initial voltage it was at, one second in, we will be at just over a third of what was there before. Another second in, I'm going to be down to about 13% of what was there before. And then another second after that, I'm going to be a third of what was there previously, so on and so forth. When you get about four or five time constants in, you are physically, in terms of any circuit you actually build, that that's effectively zero voltage, and you run into other effects and other non-ideal behaviors of the capacitor. But the, the whole notion of using E and the RC time constant manifests beautifully in this decay curve. And for the first few multiples of the time constant, what you should measure is something that looks pretty darn exponential in its decay rate, and it should, any values you get out of Logger Pro should match up pretty close with the values of the resistor and capacitor that you happen to have in a circuit.